you need to be planted in the right environment that speaks of integrity like you hear in this church that teaches you character patience process they that waits upon the Lord is a waiting process hold your destiny in your hand it's a matter of time God will vindicate you you are welcome to a great moment in destiny God is about to speak directly to you and the message coming right up is crafted by heaven not just to challenge you but to align your destiny as you embrace divine instruction, expect that God's Word is bringing about revival, healing, restoration, and transformation to your entire life. With faith in your heart and great expectation, join me and receive God's Word through His choice vessel, Goodheart Obi Ekweme. Hallelujah! Turn with me to John 3. John chapter number 3 quite a lengthy reading let's read together as a family and we'll be on our way on the entirety of the leadership of the youth ministry it's a tremendous honor given me to be with you tonight and I don't take it for granted I trust the Lord to help me to do justice to this great assignment my God I feel him all over me uh, John 3, 1 to 8. Let's read together as a happy family. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit shout a big Amen. amen. Ephesians 5.14 Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. For an assignment is time to awaken the giant within you. Hallelujah. It is high time to awaken the giant within you. Our Father, thank you for blessing the reading of your word. I beseech you again to take a coal of fire from the altar of heaven, not the lips and the tongues of clear of your seven son that tonight I will come to these your precious ones with a word from the throne of grace. I hide myself behind the cross. I decree that Christos will be seen, known and heard. We give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' wondrous name we pray. Somebody shout a big amen. Saints, when I got this assignment and the theme that I was to speak on, awakening the giant within, I began to ponder, I began to pray, I began to inquire of the Lord what exactly 
you have me say to you tonight the worst thing to not being a giant is to be a giant that is asleep let me say it again the next worst thing to not being a giant is to be a giant albeit a sleeping giant a sleeping giant is that person that carries the grace the glory the power the might of god but fails to experience tangibly in tangible concrete terms what he or she is carrying within bible declares in first john 4 4 that greater is he that is in you than all that are in the world you are carrying a mighty one on your inside shout a big amen uh, some religions have to carry their God but our own God is so gracious that he carries us not just that our God is so gracious that he has made our heart our spirit his place of residency and his place of our board the Bible declares that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost Christ in you is the hope of glory whether you know it or not you are carrying a whole lot within you that your generation is waiting to see the manifestation of and i want to prophesy over your life by the mercy and by the grace of god by the time you're done with god in this conference your world will see that the glory that you carried has begun to be revealed and made manifest to your generation i, I thought i hear a bigger amen uh, that means you're going back to where you came from not the same way you came on Wednesday you are going back revealed as a giant you're going back to your homes not the same way you came you're going back to your business not the same way you came you're not going back to school no 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 these days were designed by God to be a Holy Ghost feast for your life to be transformed for the power that you are carrying to be made manifest and revealed to your generation shout a big amen declare with me the giant in me is on the rise hallelujah the word awake in the dictionary means to rouse from sleep to cause to stop sleeping yeah to rouse from sleep to cause to stop sleeping Ephesians 5 14 says wherefore he saith awake thou that sleepest that's a word for somebody tonight awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead and Christ shall give the light Christ is said to give you light but he says you must awake you must arise arise to the reality of who you are not who they said you are not what your mother called you not what your father called you but what your heavenly father called you there is a name on names that your God called you he called you the head and not the tail above only not beneath he called you the righteous he called you prosperous he calls you victorious those are names he gave you and if you've been answering any other than tonight you have the right to refuse answering any name your heavenly father has not called you the giant within you is on the rise tonight shout a big amen, amen. the bible declares in isaiah 61 and 2 arise shine for thy light is come that's a word for somebody and the glory of the lord is risen upon thee for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but the lord shall arise upon thee upon me and his glory shall be seen risen upon you listen when the world is going through thick darkness as it is now by the way it will get thicker COVID-19 was just a dress rehearsal it's all right you see light shines best at the backdrop of darkness and as the world gets darker guess what the beauty of the light that the saints are carrying will contrast with the darkness of the world so the world may be going through all kinds of difficulty but for the church for the elect for the one who has been called by God guess 
what it's your greatest time of glory listen as thick as the darkness is all over the world over all economies guess what the church finest hour is about to dawn upon us the church is about to rise saints the church is about to be the answer of the ills the ills of mankind as was designed by god guess what you and i are part of this giant that's about to arise somebody shout a big amen the church is about to take a place of visibility of nobility of honor of glory oh yes the church is about to take a place of rulership of dominion the bible declares in psalm 110 verse 1 and 3 the lord said unto my lord sit down at my right hand until i make your enemies thy footstool ah, yeah, yeah. and he says the lord shall send forth the rod of his strength out of zion and thou shall rule in the midst of your enemies hallelujah says thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power ah, yeah, 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 yeah. it says in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning thou hast the dew of thy youth there is such a day called the day of his power he said after two days I will revive you but on the third day I will raise you up saints the church is coming to the third day of power all the church saw in yesteryear is nothing but a dress rehearsal compared to the kind of the glory that God is about to reveal. Guess what? First to you and then secondly through you. Why? The church is God's own chosen vehicle and vessel to reveal his glory to the world today. And guess what? You and I are part of that church. Somebody shout the giant in me is arising tonight. Say like you made the giant in me is arising tonight. Hallelujah. Psalm 115, verse 16. The heaven live in the heavens is your throne, is yours. But the earth has the Lord given to us, the children of men. My God, my God, my God. You were not sent to the earth to be a wanderer. You were sent to the earth to be a wonder. Isaiah 8, 18. I and my children whom the Lord gave me, we shall be for signs and for wonders. Listen, your life, your ministry, your health, your academics, your marriage is designed by God to be a wonder. Tell your neighbor, say, you're looking at a wonder right now. A wonder, a wonder, I'm a wonder, I'm a wonder, I'm a wonder, I'm a wonder to my generation. Who is a wonder? He said, Your life shall be like the wind that bloweth here and there. It listed here and there. Men can tell the impact of the wind. I'm quoting John 3, verse 8. But guess what? They can explain your coming and your going. May God do something in your life between now and the end of the year that is simply inexplicable. Men can't explain explain your money, can explain your health, can explain your anointing, can explain your power, can explain your grace, can explain the glory coming upon you. Somebody shout, I'm a wonder. <laughs> the giants in you is rising tonight. Can you clap your hands, oh ye saints? Shout to your God with the voice. I can't hear you. I can't. Where are my young people? I can't hear you. Where are the youth of Elsia? I can't hear you. Shout to your God with a voice of triumph. You are a living wonder. Men are yet to see and know who you are. You're a wonder. The church that was birthed on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2 1, 
was a wonder it was unstoppable it was unmolestable it was unhandable it was unfrustratable i mean apostles walk by the virtue of their shadow the dead are coming back to life that's a wonder church one man peter will preach and as he preached the holy ghost picked out in one day there was a revival three thousand people came to the saving knowledge that's a wonder my god my god my god if the church began like that and the bible says in haggai 2 verse 7 to 9 that the glory of the latter house shall be shall be greater than the former guess what you and i are designed my god to see more to do more than we said and read in acts 1 to 28. guess what we call it the acts of the apostles it's partially correct is the acts of the holy ghost and the holy ghost is still acting <laughs> oh we left chapter 28 we are on 29 we are on 30 we are we there is still being written in heaven and guess what guess who the actors are it's no longer paul not james not peter guess what <laughs> you are next somebody said i am next on the stage the stage is turning and i perceive the spotlight is about to shine upon you who's the next simon peter who's the next apostle paul who's the next james who's the next deborah who, who, who? somebody said i am next <laughs> abraham has come Abraham has gone. Moses came. He has gone. Paul came. He has gone. Kennedy Hagen came. He has gone. Act Bishop Benson Idahosa. He came. He has gone. T.L. Osborne came. He has gone. All the robots came. He has gone. Guess what? You are next. The giant in you is rising tonight. Can somebody shout the giant? In me rises tonight. Now clap your hands if you believe that. You are next. You are next. You are next. You are next. You are the next Kevin Kuman. You are the next Prophetess. You, you, you are next. <laughs> next numbers 14 21 mm. Mm. but as truly as i live saith the lord all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the lord the question is how is god going to fill the earth with his glory is it with angels? No. Is it with the dead saints? No. Your father, grandfather passed on? No. The way God has determined and proposed whether you like it or not to fill this earth with this glory is with the church. And his pattern is for the glory first to come to the church what you don't have you can give hmm. matthew 10 8 freely you receive freely give what you haven't received you can communicate to others because Paul said, I comfort you with the comfort I have received from the Lord you must receive it so glory is coming to you your amen sounds very questionable it needs to be revived tonight it needs to be resuscitated tonight uh -huh. glory is coming to you amen 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 then when glory comes to you glory will come to your world through you God wants to work with your hands. God wants to work with your feet. God wants to work with your head. 
but you see you must come to a point in your walk with God this is a very important point now listen carefully when you understand as a born again child of God you are no longer your own you are twice owned by God number one he owns you because he created you hello somebody are you here with me uh, you are created by God <laughs> he owns you twice because he purchased you or redeemed you from doom gloom and death you are bought with a price first Corinthians 6 20 so therefore glorify God with your body with your spirit so he bought you number two but he created you somebody said I belong to Jesus those hands of yours belongs to Jesus. Your legs belong. You see, when you begin to think this way and live this way, guess what? God begins to use your hand as his hand for power, signs, and wonders. He begins to use your life as one yielded to him to move to you, move through you to your generation. Listen, God is looking for a generation that will say yes to his will. Saying where you lead, I follow. What you instruct, I do. Where you command, I will go. That is the generation that will be used by God to bring his glory to fill the entire world may we become part of such a yielded generation yielded generation glory comes to you glory comes through you hmm. we belong to zion obadiah 117 upon mount zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Obadiah 121. Uh, and saviors. Okoleti Ganahanias. Saviors is plural. And, and saviors shall come upon where? Mount Zion. Hmm. The Zion is a kind of the church to judge the Mount of Esau. And the kingdom shall be yours. So God is waiting for an army to arise that will become quote unquote saviors to their generation. Oh yes. Oh yes. They've received life. So they are conduit of life to others. They touch the dead. The dead jumps back to life. They lay hands upon the sick. They are healed. Why? They are carriers of the Zoe. The God quality of life of God. Colossians 1 27 Christ in you is the hope of glory hiya 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 Christ in me is the hope of glory that places responsibility on you and on me I heard our father in in the clip I I, 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 I saw moments ago that this generation you know more about the blessings than the responsibility how true huh. there is a commensurate responsibility to the authority upon you as a child of God you must be responsible somebody define responsibility as the ability to respond your generation is calling for a kind of people who are they those who walk with god intimately to the point they are vessels of salvation to their generation oh boy may you walk with god to the degree and extent that men will begin to see christ in you in your character in your disposition to life uh, in your walk of integrity when you have offer to to falsify the check and the document you say no they say what manner of courage said it's all about jesus may may you live in a way that people will see christ in you 
The young man dating the woman, he said, no, we can't go to bed until we tie the knot. May they see Christ in you, in your walk of purity, in your walk of holiness, in your walk of consecration. May man see Christ in you. It's not about carrying Bible, no, it's about living the life. The best effective gospel is to live the life, the life of Christ. Let men see the love of God in you. Righteousness, character, holiness, sanctification, purity. Ah, saviors, 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 not just one savior. Saviors, Saviors shall arise upon Mount Zion. May we grow in our walk with Abba Father that will become vessels in his hand to save our city, our family, and our nation. I believe that God is beckoning upon the church in Nigeria to rise up, to be a vehicle of salvation to this nation. Oh, in the natural, we're done. It's a bad report in the natural. But guess what? It's not over until it's over. <laughs> we have a God who knows how to spring a surprise on the enemy. My God. Before the devil moved upon the chessboard of your life and your destiny, your God moved upon the chessboard. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. He is a perfect puppet master he pulls the strings behind the scene where no man can see the bible says for those who love the lord and are called according to his purpose he causes all things to work together for their good somebody shout is working together for my good both the good, the bad, the ugly is working together. Why? My God is a chef. He knows how to mix the pepper, the, uh, the salt, and the, uh, 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 whatever it is, Maggie, and bring out something delightsome in meal. He's working it all out together for good. Even the things that men say, they're delays. God is working it out together for your good. Hallelujah hallelujah as we look at our text closely John 3 we see Jesus refer to two words that have to do with the kingdom of God he spoke about seeing the kingdom John 3 3 Jesus answered and said unto him Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Wow. In verse number five, he says, and Jesus answered, there's a dialogue between Nicodemus and Jesus. You know the story already. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water. Water is a typology of the word. So he shall wash us by the cleansing of the word, by the water. So by the word and by the spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Wow. So two words is to see the kingdom. Mm -hmm. When you walk up the aisle, if you did, if you have, if not, tonight is your night. I did so 1985. As a first year student in Amarabel University, 85, got born again. It's good to start early. I was 16, going on 17. Before I could mess up too far, the Lord caught me. 16 to 17, by 18, I was preaching. By 19, I was pastoring. By 20, I was a lead pastor of a church, not fellowship, on campus. I went to Joss as a youth couple in 1989 to do NYC. I began a church, Better Life Chapel, at 21, as a youth couple start early that's why daddy has made this room for you to start early it pays to start early shout amen. amen praise god and for these years god has kept me it's getting sweeter by the day december should the lord tarry i'll be 54 years old i don't look it i don't plan to look it 
Shout hallelujah. Praise God. So Jesus spoke about seeing the kingdom. He spoke about entering the kingdom. When you're born again, as we know to be born again, you see the kingdom. Really, to be told is, you see the kingdom by beginning to enter the kingdom. All right? Listen carefully. I want to teach you. Seeing the kingdom is an act, an event. Say with me, seeing the kingdom is an act and an event. Entering the kingdom is not an act, it's not an event, it's a process, it's a journey. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So you see the kingdom when you get born again, then you are expected by God as the mission is to make a disciple of yourself. What does that mean? You're going oh boy beyond accepting jesus to be your savior only to add something else help me lord to communicate you are going through a journey and a process where you make him your lord as well as your savior by the way being born again for many years does not make this automatic sir there are many born again believers after 20 30 40 years they have not begun to be disciples <laughs> that's why you, you see some things you wonder ah he's a bishop is a cat kiss is a reverend father is a pope why is he doing this don't be worried they may be born again but They've not enrolled to discipleship. Hi. Oh my God. Jesus related to the crowd differently from the disciples. Hello, somebody. Many times he will send the crowd away. And then he will ask the disciples to go to the other side it is those who have enrolled the process of discipleship and the process of entering the kingdom that he tells to go to the other side can you tell your neighbor i am going to the other side after this conference i didn't hear you i didn't hear you i am going to the other side of maturity of discipleship after this conference so see the kingdom, enter the kingdom. I'm going somewhere. Hmm. So based on our theme and our teaching, you can, you can posit and presuppose and postulate, <laughs> praise God, that, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. When you're born again, listen carefully, the giant was placed in you. Colossians 1.27 Christ in me, the hope of glory. Hmm. 1 John 4.4 Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. But you see, though the giant is in you, the giants needs to be revealed. Oh, help me, Lord. The giants need to be uncovered. This mic is covered now. It's a mic. It's a mic. You can't doubt it's a mic. But it's not effective covered. I'm not seeing it. So you're born again. You're carrying Christos in you, the hope of glory. The world can't enjoy the Christ you carry until something happens apocalypse unveiling oh, yeah. this unveiling is likened to the giant within you awakening are you here please be here so you are a giant born again you are carrying a giant but something needs to happen to you 
for the giant you carry to be revealed to your world otherwise it's only at the potential stage and level are you here let's go deeper philippians 2 12 and 13 help me multimedia if you can oh help me jesus to communicate i really want to deposit things in you philippians 2 12 and 13 please pay attention wherefore my beloved as you have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence are you there can we read together let's go together walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling stop there i thought salvation is all grace it's true so why the work I want that to simmer into your spirit so you can be careful with faulty grace teachings with extreme grace teachings you can add to salvation you can remove from salvation listen but if your world is going to taste the glory you carry that glory must be worked If you're clapping clap properly i'm preaching myself happy because why will it be i'm born again but i'm stuck in the rot of fornication you're born again you speak you, you, you in church but you you know you're you're living a, a licentious life you know you lie like a fish not here you know you can't keep your hand from money something just grabs things that are not yours but you're born again truly you're born again but the world looks at you they say are you really born again the point is the giant is in you but sleeping that's why we have this conference so there is there is an enabling environment that helps the giant to arise in, in human science there's what is called please listen carefully i want to drop stuff here now what is called nature 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 listen carefully there's what is called nurture. N U R T, nurture. All right. Nature means I carry the DNA of my biological father. The late Dr. Alexander Ifan Chikwekweme, I carry it in my genes. But do you know what? It wasn't enough for me to pick up his traits because i have his nature i was raised in an environment that nurtured me i value integrity because my father valued it my name means equo eme equeme that is the nurture that i was raised I value service to mankind because of my nurture. I value humility, not pride and arrogance. Nurture. I learned it because I was nurtured. Are you here? It's not enough to carry the DNA of your father. You serve what seems to be your youth in a place, 21 years and then god says get up get out you think you want to go oh no no normal peer person wants to go <laughs> i tell those who care to hear me it was easier to stay back than to go but i want to help you youth <laughs> don't live your life 
pursuing the pathway of least resistance the church of today speaks of very awkward prosperity everything pim 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 no waste process <laughs> if you go up you will blow up if you grow up you will stay up yes, i will say it again if you hurriedly as a young man and a woman go up you will blow up but if you subscribe yourself to the process of growing up you will stay up hmm. you're here five years three years you're already seeing visions of your own ministry slow down don't be in a hurry you've not been tested yet don't slow down hmm. help me lord i have six minutes <laughs> five keys let me complete the text Philippians 2 13 so you know it's there for it this is important let me finish it well it's in the bible verse 13 <laughs> for it is God who now this is a comfort it's really God not your power not your mind I can do it it is God which works in me both to will and to do of his good pleasure so the comfort is though the bible says in verse 12 where to walk out what he walked in is that okay please are you here i want you to get it we, we are we are to that's responsibility we're to walk out what he walked in at salvation yeah but we can't do it by our own power he says it is god that helps you eh, to will and to do so the key is depend on the holy spirit to work out your salvation to move you from seeing the kingdom to entering the kingdom and unraveling the giant within you may that giant truly arise in the name of the lord jesus christ very quickly five keys to awaken the giant within you number one key understand potential what is potential understand what potential is it's important to understand that god is not a respecter of persons what he said to one he said to another every believer is equally graced please listen carefully to end up in glory every believer every believer there's no big calling or small calling so i say to you run your race stay on your lane hallelujah every believer is equally called to enjoy glory look at this our journey begins from foreknowledge and our journey ends in glorification write down romans 8 29 to 30 for a reference for whom he did foreknow he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren moreover whom he did predestinate then he also called it's a relay race it's a relay race pass on the baton whom he called then he also justified whom he justified he also glorified so it begins with god knowing foreknowledge but it ends with glory every man's life and destiny is potentially potentially equally glorious praise god this will make you stop being jealous of somebody's destiny walk your stuff you will see glory number two and to awaken the giant number two discover purpose seek to answer and unravel the big question who am i what am i here on earth for every individual on earth is designed by god to fulfill purpose and destiny you are a key look for the door you're designed to open you're an answer to a question stop trying to answer somebody else's question no let's move from competition to complementing one another i can't do what you can do i can't do what the can do and perhaps with all humility he may not do what i'm called to do by god likewise as young as you are the things you're called to do i cannot do in my lifetime but we're equally graced to run our race fulfill our purpose and destiny shout a big amen. amen hallelujah 
You see, a life lived without purpose is a wasted life. One of the reasons you see some old men very regretful and vengeful about life, they climbed the proverbial ladder of success. They got there, but realized it was empty and they were regretful. 80 years gone, 70 gone. Called to be a preacher, but he said, I must be a politician. Called to be a doctor. He said, I must be a lawyer. I just like it. I like to be a lawyer. I'm just using this illustrations. The point is, find your rhythm in God. When you find your rhythm in God, you can take the difficulties along that pathway and still stand the test. There are things people can't handle who are not called to walk your way. But you walk them so easily. Sir, Oga, how do you survive? He said, I'm called to handle it. I'm wired to go through what I'm going through. Praise God. You're wired for your journey. So please, discover purpose early and seek to pursue purpose. I'm not saying jump from one thing, uh, be honorable, be reasonable, be decent, but know where it is God is leading you and, and, and begin to prepare yourself to get there. Number three. Hiya. By the way, God respects your choices and your decisions. Deuteronomy 13, 19. I present before you good and evil, life and death. I will you choose life that you live. So, so God is a God of choices. Your choices determines your destiny. So the question is, if we're all equally grace, potentially, why are we not equally enjoying glory? Because your choices, your decisions. The choice I made as a young man, I, I, I had to re re reorganize myself. Praise God. Let me give you an example, because we're young people, so I can tell you. I got born again very early. I was so convinced I was called to be a preacher. I jumped on the battle gun, run up and down, preaching. After a while, I was the proverbial black sheep of my family. My father, a man of letters, seven, eight degrees. Hello? Not honorary. End. PhD, town, town planning classic, master's in law, uh, 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 first degree law, master's in law, law school, classics, law, uh, 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 classics, seven degrees. He read the, all of them, not honorary. So he said, this young boy, you're not okay. You have one degree. He said, become a proper, you know what I'm saying? Go to school. Call the long story short. He said to me, you read BSC accountancy in school. And as far as he was concerned, in his words, I was a half big illiterate or literate. Can you imagine, sir? What an insult, sir. BSC accounting, I'm bragging about. He said, no. You get on, go and do your professional exam to become a chartered accountant. I wrestled for a long time, but you know, I came to my marbles. I said, no, I can't continue stressing this old man like this. I went home, left ministry. We signed a deal. He said, you go. Get this part of your life right, and I let you do what you want to do. I said, really? Deal. I got on the KPMG, studied, I think about two years, so, uh, got through my chatter, uh, whatever. Became chatter. I said, dad, it's done. I said, are you okay? I said, yeah, bye. And I'm still where I am today. But I gave him peace of mind. Do you know what? Thank God for fathers who see further than children. I line not, if my father had not encouraged me to do what I did, I will feel there's something missing in my life. Yeah, it's the truth. So yeah, I'm a, that's an accountant. No, it's my father that got me to do it. Right now, I know I don't have sawdust in my brain. I'm just doing this because I'm called to do it. I'm not all day. I'm not fool. No, it's a calling, genuine calling. It's not out of looking for what to eat. It's a call. What am I saying? Part of what I'm going to say is number three, subscribe yourself to mentorship. That's where I'm going. Your mentors are men, not only men, women, who have gone ahead of you, who show you a picture of what your life could be, should be in the future. So somebody def define mentors as men, tor, T-O-U-R. What is that? Men touring others you want your journey to be emerged find a mentor find mentors stay undercover you're on this church stay on that don't be running like a rat 
Today is uh, fire mountain and miracle. Six months, your revival is coming again. That's when Holy Ghost fire. Fit. Sit down. There's restlessness with young people just going up and down. The new thing in church, the new one is coming. Hey, it's, it's here, there. It's, sit down. What you're looking for is good in Shokoto. Sit down. Subscribe to mentorship. Every Elisha had Elijah. Every Joshua had Moses. He say Elisha did two times miracle than, 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 than Elisha. Stop it. There can be no Elisha without Elijah. Ah, Joshua. He brought them to the promised land. Stop it. He was an extension of the ministry of Moses. Every generation is designed by God to see more than the other generation. Not because you're powerful. Why? You simply have been able to climb upon shoulders of giants. Giants. You stand here. You see a little further in your own generation. So you can take this ministry a little further in your generation. Don't feel you've arrived. No, 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 no. You just have giants to stand on their shoulders. People say, I'm, 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 I'm self-made. There's no self-made man. We are products of people. Anointings here are moving here. I can call them for you one by one. Plenty here. Plenty, 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 plenty. Plenty people moving here. I've read, I've stopped, I've chopped their stuff. That now a self made you're not a self made man. Listen, you can't don't reinvent the wheel. The wheel is made. Use the wheel. You've I want to tell you your assignment and your role in your generation is to take all Christian fellowship mission to the next level. I'll do it if you can what your father began. You'll be happy in his grave when his time is over. This work will last him, alas, there is unborn. That's how it's meant to be. Stand on the shoulders of giants, see further and go further. Mentors. Finally, subscribe to training. Learn, learn. What you learn today will determine what you earn tomorrow. Hallelujah. What you learn today will determine what you earn tomorrow. Mm. If you think education is expensive, somebody said, try ignorance. Keep on updating yourself so that you will not be outdated. Rise on your feet, people of God. Raise your hands, giants. Raise your hands, giants. Come on, play something on the key. Raise your hands, raise your hands. Shakaboka. Can we consecrate our lives to Adonai, El Elyon tonight? Oh, yes. Welcome the breath of the Holy Ghost to breathe upon you. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. This is the making of giants. <laughs> Lift your voice and bless him for two, three minutes. Can you thank him that the seed within you is rising? You are not only seeing the kingdom. You are now entering the kingdom. You're not just seeing, but you're subscribing to discipleship. Open your voice, mouth and thank him. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. We love you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. Can you rededicate really dedicate your life to Jesus? Say, Lord, use me. If you can use anybody, use me. Ah. Yes, use me, Lord. Let it be your cry. Thank you, Father. Shut up, I Everybody, yes, I stay. I stay. I stay. Song of consecration. Oh, praise is you. I stand. Take it up. Yes, I stand. I stand. 
I perceive that tonight is a night of reawakening of who we are in Christ, which requires a recommitment, a rededication to our God. If you will, please, in this hall, shall we just lift our hands to Abba Father as we pray together as a family to the very God that has ransomed our souls from the grave. <laughs> The King of Kings, the El Elyon, the Adonai, the one with whom alone we have to do with, the first, the last, <laughs> the beginning, the ending. He's worthy of our praise. Can you repeat these words with me from the depth of your heart? Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you just as I am I present this life that you gave me unto you again I open the door of my heart I embrace you as my Lord and my Savior forgive me Jesus in every area I sinned against you whether in thought whether in words whether in action Tonight, in the company of the saints, I pledge my allegiance to love you, to serve you with my all and all my days. Thank you for causing the giant within me to be awoken tonight. I decree and declare over my life from tonight, it shall be forward ever and backward never it shall be upward ever downward never thank you jesus i give you the praise and the glory you alone are deserving of it with my clap i celebrate you give the lord a praise have just experienced the preaching and teaching ministry of Goodheart Obi Ekweme, lead pastor of Revival House of Glory International Church, Rajik, and the apostolic leader of the Horn of Revival Ministry, HORM, a global outreach ministry mandated to carry the torch of revival across cities and nations. If you would like to ask a question, share your prayer request or testimony, or get more messages or books from Goodheart, please call or text 0805-223-4444 or email info at rogic.org. Also, download the Horn of Revival Ministry app on Google Play or Apple Store to connect with a variety of free quality resources including Rogic Radio and our refreshing daily devotions to take you higher in life. Keep hearing the Word of God. It will produce intimacy with His Spirit for uncommon encounters on the earth.